Hello, all you wonderful and creative people. I'm Pixie, and this is Pixie's Projects. If you visited before, welcome back, and if you're new, welcome in. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to do a buddy color that I have for the month of October, and it's in A Million Magical Creatures by Lulu Mayo, and I'll be using my Lyra Aqua Colors. Stay tuned, and we'll get this thing started. I have the 24 pack of Lyra Aqua Colors. I believe they also come in a 48 set. But I started with the 24 because I bought them at the same time that I bought my Neo Color 2s. And I wasn't sure which one I was going to like more. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll talk about the differences between the two or how I see them as different. And I'm just getting my page ready to go. Prior to filming, I gessoed the page and sanded it down. And because this page is at the end of the book, I'm clipping it down so that it gets a little more weight to it because it keeps wanting to flop back up. So now that we've got our page ready, we're just going to start coloring. I'm starting our jack-o'-lantern with number eight, Canary Yellow. And I'm just starting with my lightest color first because I didn't want to go too dark too fast. I wanted this to be kind of a lighter pumpkin. It was a little, if it was a little too dark, the background that I want to do won't really work out for me. Um, it would kind of look dull and faded if I did that. So I wanted to get a lot of light into the face of the, the jack-o'-lantern to work with so that I could get what I wanted from it. So on screen, it may look really yellow. It is called canary yellow. But once we start adding the darker orange in, it, it'll just work out well. So we're just getting that layer down and we will add in the darker colors and blend them together when we do the water to activate these crayons. But this is a buddy color I have with colorist Jen 1975 on Instagram and she's a channel friend here as well. I'll show her handle on Instagram on the screen and she'll be in the comments below. Here we're coming in with number 15, dark orange. I'm taking that all around the edges of the pumpkins, behind the ribbons for shadow, and into each section of the pumpkin where they have the dividing lines. Basically, if Lulu Mayo put lines down, I'm going to go ahead and add shadow in those areas, and I'll be able to use my water to pull that color out into the canary yellow sections of the jack-o'-lantern. Now that I've added in the canary yellow and the dark orange all around the jack-o'-lantern's face, I'm coming back in with a small paintbrush and just starting to blend the colors together. They are water activated and they activate quite well. And you also don't need to lay down a lot of pigment to get a very vibrant color, which you'll be able to see as I start blending it out with the brush. I know when I purchased my Lyra Aqua Colors and my Neo Color 2s, there was a large price difference between the two. The Lyra Colors were cheaper, and I was very curious as to how both of them would perform. During the course of this video, I will go through different things about both that I liked, and you'll be able to see just by watching the video how the Lyras perform on their own.
As we're getting further along with our pumpkin's face, you can see that the dark orange is really blending well into the canary yellow and we're smoothing out a lot of that yellow so that it's just very bright in the center so that your eye is drawn towards the eye sockets of the pumpkin because that's where all the action is. She's got bats in there and spiders and bunting. It's very cute inside there. So I really wanted to get most of the picture to focus into the eyes. I hope everyone's been doing well and I hope you've been enjoying the tricks and treats for this month. Um, I've really enjoyed making these videos. I've had a lot of fun just experimenting with different ways to create my videos and different ways to add to the channel. I've been having a good time making a variety of videos and changing up the way that I edit my videos to see if I can work something out where it is optimal for me, like is in the best and easiest way for me to do it and still get a good result. And also just to make the videos more attractive and easily viewable for you. I hope it's working out. If you have any comments or suggestions, let me know down below. And that is something that I'll be able to use going forward with my videos and I would appreciate any feedback that you had. I'm going to color the top of the pumpkin, the stem, and I'm doing that with number 075 dark sepia and also 068 moss green. And I'm just blending the two of those together with the water and blending them out so that they're just one color. But because I have the smaller set of these, sometimes you have to make your own blend to get the color that you want. This bow has been calling to me since I started this page and I do not know why. As I've continued to color it, I, I got so into the bow, I was here for a while. Um, this video will be sped up in places and slowed down in others either to highlight what I'm saying or because I, it's, I'm so painstakingly slow with the work that I wouldn't make you watch all of that you know, in real time. I did spend a lot of time just coloring the bow. So I guess it's something about those lines. It just made me happy. Um, I used Magenta 034, Dark Carmine 026, and 001 White to color in the bow. And again, Lulu Mayo laid down the lines for us so that I didn't have to do a lot of work. There are black lines inside the bow. So I just put the magenta in the darkest parts of that followed by the dark carmine, and in the very centers of the larger parts of the bows, I added the white. It will not stay white because I will drag the pink into it and blend it out that way, so that it's just lighter in the middle, but not white.
I am so pleased with how the bow turned out. It looks like it's very shiny to me and it has very autumn feel to it. So I'm just thrilled that I was able to get that from those colors. We've had a bit of a change in our light quality because I did the first part of this video at night and I had the optimal lighting conditions because I made them myself. And now that I'm on to the second part of this video, it's daylight, the sun was out, it was glorious. I was basking in the sunlight and really did not pay attention to the fact that it would cast a lot of shadows for you all on video. I could see fine while I was coloring and just did not think it through. I honestly forgot that I was filming my entire coloring session instead of just mind mindlessly coloring. I put on um, a show that I wanted to watch. I'm very much watching Dairy Girls right now and finishing that up since it's the end of the series. And I was watching that and laughing along and coloring and not paying any mind to the camera. So I do apologize for that long shadow that we have going on there. I'm coming in now and working on the decorations on the jack-o'-lantern's face. There are four or five circles there that I can see because my hand is in the way right now. Um, I did those with number 70, apple green, just the outlines of them. Then towards the top there are three circles, semi-circles, that have something, nothing inside of the green. So I did those with number seven, lemon. And you'll see the other two semicircles at the bottom. I colored in orange because I wanted to leave them orange because the semicircles are like half open on those two. I'm coloring the inside of the top three semicircles with number five, lemon cadmium. And from where I can see, it doesn't look like it's very, very visible, but once I add the water, it'll brighten up like the rest of the picture has so far. I wanted to finish up the rest of the pumpkin's decorations before I went into the eyes of the pumpkin. So right now I'm just gonna color the mouth or the line for the mouth in the magenta that we used earlier, number 34. I'm trying to keep a fairly cohesive color palette and not add in a bunch of additional colors because I don't wanna get it too messy. Um, I like things to have a limited palette and with something like this, it you can't really limit it too much. So I'm doing my best with it, and I think I did a fairly good job at the end. You'll have to let me know what you think. I'm coming in because there's a bunch of little dots and hearts all over his face, and I'm adding the dark carmine, number 26, for that. And again, that is another color that was inside the bow along with the magenta. All we have left are a few tiny spots around those circles and I've decided to go in with number 47 light blue and just take out the centers of each of those areas. Um, they don't even out as far as how many spokes there are so I'm just doing my best to make it as um, to make it look as even as possible. Then I'm going back with my number 70 apple green and putting those on either side of the light blue. 
and then I'll come in with my lemon cadmium number five and do the outside spokes of each of those. They look like suns to me, so I'll just say they're suns. But yeah, I'll do the blue, then the green, then the yellow on those. And I'm also using number 70 apple green to do the outside of the pumpkin's eyes. It's time to color inside of his eyeballs and get to those fat little bats that I think are so adorable. I'm coloring the bats' bodies with number 26, Dark Carmine. Again, trying to stick with that sort of limited color palette. And I will do all the bats the same color. I've used number 13, Light Orange, to do the bunting inside the eyes. I've also used number 7, Lemon to do the stripes on the spiders and their web hanging down in between them. And I'll color the rest of the spiders' bodies with magenta, number 34. And I'll also do the bat's wings in 34. I'm applying the color a little bit differently here. I'm taking my paintbrush and applying it directly to the crayon to transfer the color to the brush, and then using the brush to transfer it to the paper to do the wings because the area was too small for me to use the actual crayon on the page. So now the little bat wings are getting colored in. And I also used the lemon yellow on the witch hat that the bat is wearing on the left hand side eyeball. As you can see here, I started to use the Lyra aqua colors to make the background. I had added black all around the outside edge of the pumpkin and I was going to drag it around and try to make the background look like smoke. As I started getting into it, which I'm about a quarter of the way through, I looked at it and I thought that it just dulled out the brightness of my pumpkin. So I decided to go in with acrylic paints and do it that way. So now I just have a very small brush and I'm going to do all around the outside edge of the pumpkin so that it's easier for me to come in with a flat brush in just a little bit and just get that color down on the page. I honestly can't remember what I used here. It's either Liquitex or Artsmith Mars Black and I'll make sure I link that down below as well. It's a very nice paint. It, both of them are. It's like, um, both brands are a very nice paint. They're not very thick and they're not very watery, they're just right. So when I'm painting in a background, I might need to do two layers and not much more than that. Maybe some touch-ups here and there depending on how careless I was in the application of the paint more than the paint itself and its properties.
Now that the entire pumpkin is outlined, it's time to bring out my flat brush and really just get that color laid down on the paper so that we can move on to the fun bits, which are the finishing touches. So as you can see in the video, I am going up and down with my strokes to add on my acrylic background. After that, once it's dry, and I did not do this part on video, so I'm telling you now, once it dried, I went back in and did a second layer of paint going from left to right or right to left, just across instead of up and down, to get an even layer of color on the entire page. It didn't necessarily need the second coat, but I'm so conditioned to do it at this point that I just went for it and did it anyway. One of my favorite bullet journal content creators here on YouTube, in each of her videos where she shows her monthly pages or is showing how she does her monthly pages, she talks about from the moment the pen touches the paper until the design is complete and tells you how long it takes because her videos are sped up, which is what I've been doing with mine. So I would like to take just a moment to let you know how long the page took in real time, which was two hours and 20 minutes. I bought both the Neo Color 2s and the Lyra Aqua Colors and I found after experimenting with them both that I enjoyed the Neo Color 2s more than I did the Lyra Colors. So I went ahead and bought the entire set of the Neo Color 2s and kept my 24 set of the Lyra Colors. I don't pull them out often, but I thought they would be a fun medium to use since I don't see them used that much. Um, the Lyras are cheaper than the Neo Color 2s, but I also feel like when I use my Lyras, I want to make sure that my page is prepped because I feel like I need to use more water to move the Lyra pigment than I do to use, move the Neo Color 2 pigment. Now this could be something that's just a preference of mine or it's something that's across the board. If you have both of these, let me know if you find a difference in how much water you need to use to get them to move. In either scenario, I would recommend both of these crayons, the Neo Color 2s and the Lyra Aqua Colors, but I do believe, and I will check the prices and leave them down below, that the prices of the Lyra are slightly cheaper than the prices of the Neo Color 2s, which makes it a more, and I use that term loosely, a more budget-friendly supply. I don't know that either of these are definitely budget-friendly, but they are something that you can invest in or buy for yourself as a treat. So for our finishing touches, I decided to use my Fine Life acrylic paint pens and I took a pink one and just added back a little bit of the ribbon because there was one section that the way that it was twisted in the drawing, it was just a black line. So once I added the black acrylic background, we lost that line. So I just added it back in with the pink pen and then I'm going to use my yellow Fine Life acrylic marker to add stars and sparkles to the background of the page. And lastly, I took my purple acrylic marker and put the legs on the spiders that are inside the eye sockets. I also added it to the lines around the magenta wings that I colored onto the bats. I don't feel like this really added anything to it, but at the time that I was doing it, I thought it might, and it wasn't quite dry, so I continued to do every bat wing. Once I was finished, I realized it was not adding anything to the page, but it didn't take anything away either. I hope you enjoyed today's tricks and treats video and we'll come back tomorrow for another one. So until then, have a very colorful day friends. Bye!